Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. And joining me today, got a very special guest. He is a redshirt sophomore, University of Florida. Uh, he's been out for a long time, but he just got back into racing, into the swing of things. I'm really excited to to hear about his last couple of years. We've got Trey Freeman. Trey, how's it going, man? It's going pretty well. Thanks for having me. swam at the Auburn invite, uh, with the rest of your Florida team the weekend before Thanksgiving. Um, how, how, how was that invite, you know, mid season invite uh, it's, it's a, it's been a rocky season so far for everyone. How was it just to get up on the blocks and get some short course racing in? Uh, it was good. I mean, I'm pretty happy with where I was at. I mean, we didn't really rest we didn't shave, just threw on a suit. And it's for me, it's been a while since I've got to race with a suit on. So yeah, it's, it was good. It felt good to be back in that sort of environment. It was a little weird, of course, just because everything's a little bit different. I mean, South Carolina was supposed to be an invite too. So it, it ended up just being like an Auburn, Florida invite format dual meet. But yeah, it was really fun to just kind of get back to racing some people that I haven't seen in a while. And uh, I mean, it's always fun to race mid-season, especially kind of get a, a little idea of how your training's going so far. So I'm happy with where I'm at with that. Yeah. Can, can you break things down for you personally, just a little more, um, give, you know, what, what times did you throw down and, and how did you kind of assess those races? So for me, I actually was not planning on going to the Auburn invite cause I went to us open what, the week before and I raced three races. And after that I was hurting, I was, I forgot how tough just racing hundred percent effort is and how much meets take out of you. And I was I wasn't planning on going. I was like, all right, just get home Thanksgiving, just enjoy some time with the family. And then I, I realized after the last session, US Open, I was like, I need to do some more racing because if I just show up to SECs, like a four day meet, show up to NCAAs and not have that kind of under my belt and be a little bit more prepared for that, then I was going to be in trouble. So we got to Auburn and I told Coach Steve that I wanted to do, if I was like on a D relay, I wanted to do like every relay and I wanted to swim all my individuals so just to get more reps i mean i was doing doubles and triples at night so it was it was challenging but it was good for me i mean my 500 415 um 415 oh bobby almost ran me down so not quite but um uh, my 200 was 134 and i split it really well so i was happy with those two my 100 i actually tied my best time to the 100th and then went one 100 slower than that on the relay a couple minutes later. So that was a little frustrating, but I mean, for mid season, I'm really happy with those. And uh, it was fun to get on the re like be on those relays and just kind of mess around with the guys and have a little bit more fun than like, I guess what I was used to in the past, if that makes sense. Yeah. What I'm so you on a, on a weekend where you didn't even plan on racing originally, you got a lot of reps in, like you said, what did you, how did you come out of that weekend? What, what had you gained um, from that weekend? How'd, how'd you come out of the weekend feeling? Uh, I felt, I felt pretty good. It's like surprisingly pretty good. I mean, I was working a lot with coach Steve on just figuring out what strokes work for me. I mean, some of those days I swam the 200 free three times in one day. So it's like, I have three, I mean, it was, there's only like 20 people entered in the 200 free anyway. So I, I know I'm going to get three swims and I got to kind of experiment with that and swim it differently and just try different things and same with the hundred free. So and we've been working on being a little more aggressive on the front half of my sprint stuff. Cause that's not usually, I mean, I guess in the past, it's not what I've swam, but I think that's where I'm leaning towards swimming this year. So yeah, it's, it's been fun. I mean, just getting those reps in was really important for me at this time of year, just in not having done it in so long. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I've, I, I, I felt good with those swims. Yeah, for sure. What on the, on the tuner free on the hundred free, when you did swim, you know, those events, you swam three times in one day. What, what did you find the best balance or, or race strategy for you was, you know, you said you'd played with them a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, my tuner free or my 
I guess my middle two and three, the individual at night, I, I actually split that really well. And I was happy with that. I mean, the with taper and stuff, that front half, or it'll all be just a little bit quicker. But I mean, I was I was happy with the the way I was splitting my races. I found in the 100 free, I, it's so hard for me to go out with those sprinters because I usually am a little more middle distance. So it's I have that aerobic base and I just, it's hard for me to spin my wheels that first 50 of 100 and stay up with those guys because I know I can like stay with them coming home mm-hmm. but just being at the 50 with them is just hard <laughs> and i gotta get used to that but i know if i can get out aggressively then i can i can also i also have the strength to bring it home so i think not over i guess for my 500 and stuff i always am thinking kind of go out on the arms back on the legs and that's kind of how i'd like to think about all my races is swim as, or basically just like pull as long as i can before i have to bring in the legs for, especially for that hundred, you know, like you said, spinning the wheels early can be a challenge. Um, is there a specific way you warm up for that hundred freestyle that's maybe different from the two hundred or five hundred? What what do, how how do you prepare for that race? Uh, well, I don't do any pace. I just do like a dive twenty five, and that was the actually one thing we did learn in the morning. I just did one, and I was like ten six, but I was like to the feet. I was like, all right, like. That's, I'll just go faster in the race. Like, I'll just be fine. Like, I just <laughs> I had an idea in my head. I was like, all right, that, that was fine. Yeah, I, I can I can fix that. And then in my prelim, I was out just way too slow. And at night, Coach T was like, I, I don't care how many you do, but we're going to get at least one under 10, and you're going to just keep doing it until you do that so you know where you need to be. And it only took me like two or three. But, yeah, once I – I needed that kind of in my head so I knew, one, I could do it, and two, that it wasn't – or they can be that hard. I just need to be ready to do that. Interesting. Yeah. That's you, again, not maybe your first instinct or not maybe anyone's first instinct, but that's, that's a, that's a, that's a cool thing to learn mm. um, through those reps. So, so it seems like that meet went well. Uh, let's take it back a little further to, you know, you mentioned U S open uh, first long course reps. I'm guessing it in, in probably a while. Take me through that meet. How'd it go for you? Yeah, that was first long course racing since um, summer nationals at Stanford. And I mean, I was, I'm, I'm happy with the swims in retrospect. I'm happy at the meet. I was a little frustrated because I thought I could be a little bit quicker. And I think I, like I thought I was in my head, I was thinking, all right, like I should do pretty well here. I haven't swam long course in a while, but it's just long or racing long course is completely different after training short course for so long. So, I mean, I was a little frustrated, but I think for right now where I'm at, those are good swims for me. And obviously I wanted to try to keep up with like Kieran and stuff, but I was, I like at the, in the 200, I was like near him at the hunter. I was like, Oh, this is good. And I like in my underwaters, I come up, take a breath. And he's like a body like the head. He was like, Oh no. But <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just getting back into some long course racing, I, I think I'm, I'm happy with where those are at. And obviously with when we start training long course primarily more, that those swims will come a little more naturally and they won't be as forced, I guess. But yeah, I mean, US Open was an interesting experience because it felt, it just felt different. There's like 190 people at that meet. And there's was just, it, like, it felt like a UF inner squad with our like pro group like it just Mm -hmm. it felt really different so yeah it was i don't want to like i i I give usa swimming a lot of credit for how they put on the whole us open and it was it really the fact that everything went like well is really good for our sport and stuff but it just it was so hard for me to get like into that serious serious mindset when it kind of felt like a summer league meet especially being outside in sarasota it was beautiful but yeah i just it was a little bit of a different environment. And for me mentally getting that focused for it was a bit of a challenge. Yeah. I, I was at the U S open site in San Antonio, just an hour away from where I live in Austin. And it was, it was very bizarre. The, the, the setting was surreal. You had maybe 30 people on deck at a time. I think, yeah, total entrance. We had like a hundred or so. And there, it was, yeah, it was Texas. And a few club teams. And that's about it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It was bizarre. I mean, and that, like, oh, what was it? The Oregon site. They had like <laughs> events with 
two people in it. Right. So it, it's just a weird format. And knowing that we were, I wasn't just racing like Kieran, Bobby, my team Alphonse. Like I wasn't just racing those guys. I was racing all the guys that are swimming at the other sites. So the guys that are going to swim three hours later over in California. So yeah, it was, it was weird just thinking about that and just waiting for results to kind of slowly pour in. Yeah. Which, yeah, again, props to USA Swimming. It, it went well, and I think it was a success in terms of getting those long course reps in. But, yeah, it's a, it's, it was just a bizarre uh, scenario for sure. Um, yeah, I'm, to say I'm excited for, like, a normal big long course meet, like trials hopefully will be as, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so so we'll, uh, I'll bring it back to looking forward a little bit later, but – um, you know, let's look back. You, like you said, it's been a lot. You, these are your first races in quite a long time. Um, you know, you, you go to world university games in summer, 2019, you go to summer nationals. Um, and then at what point do, do you injure yourself after that? So I actually, my initial injury, actually, I won't go too much into detail, but it actually happened my freshman year. Okay. And it was something that we like it, it we just kind of we did like rehab and PT for it and everything was fine. Like my my trainers and doctors and stuff, they all took really good care of me and Coach Nesty and Coach Steve really worked well with them to make sure I was in a good place and I was healthy. And so I I mean for the short of it, I was pulling from November my freshman year up through January. So I wasn't like training within my legs okay. for all that time and it really showed when I got to SECs and stuff I had my legs just were not there and I was a little bit out of shape just from not like I wasn't doing as much work and I was still eating so <laughs> yeah I mean once we got that was a really long season for me just physically mentally it was it was really draining and it, just the adjustment and then having that happen and it just uh it took a lot a lot out of me but um yeah, then we got into the summer. I actually, last summer was also quite long because I got, um, after Grant Schultz had hurt his shoulder, they actually, because I was in the A final in Irvine, they gave me an opportunity if I was to get under the A cut, the FINA A cut for like, at like uh, FINA approved meet or whatever, like Clovis, where I ended up going. If I got under the A cut and that for free, then I could have gone to Worlds. So that was actually, I ended up resting for Clovis, swimming about my best there, just like not quite my best. And then again, tapering for World University Games two weeks later, and then coming home and tapering again for Nationals two weeks later. So it was just a, a long summer where I had only trained for like a month and a half. And before... Um, Last fall, yeah, I'd really only trained, like gone through a good training block of more than a month and a half or two months since my like senior year of high school. Like I hadn't, I had just been tapering, either hurt tapering, or I had like a month and a half of good training after NCAAs before Clovis. So Holy then uh, we got into the fall. I, oh, oh, so, sorry, sorry, hold on, hold on. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm rambling a bit. No, not at all, but I just, I, I you know. I didn't know some of this and I, mm, if, no if one really your game, <laughs> yeah, if your game, I want to get into it, you know, like take, take me through, you, you come in freshman season and like you said, hard transition for anyone anyway, cause, cause, cause it's your first year of college, you know, it, you know why new lifestyle, new training. And then, uh, and then you get hurt and, you know, again, take, take me through that. Like emotionally, how did that affect you just being, an 18, 19 year old kid. Yeah. I mean, it was frustrating. I mean, immediately, um, right afterwards, I, my thoughts immediately went to like, like what just happened. I, like, I'm freaking out in my head. Like I just, I, cause I don't know what's going on. And obviously like, this is like, this was like the first substantial like injury I've ever had or something that's affected my swimming long-term. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm 2,500 miles away from my parents my sibling, like my sister, who I usually talk to a lot is, um, she's up in Cincinnati. Just like, I've got like, I've got like my teammates and my, my swim family, my coaches who are like my family, 
but it just I felt a little I was just like what's going on like why is why now like like who do I go to kind of thing so I I mean and then training through that I I, it was just hard because I, I felt like I wasn't going to be able to meet the expectations that I had for myself or that I thought others had for me. And that trend just kind of continued. And that, that really took a big toll on me. And I mean, mentally I was, I was struggling pretty bad. And I mean, my, I talked to a counselor like twice a week or, or every other week. And we still meet, I guess, having that support system around me has really helped me get through that rut that I had. And uh, I mean, yeah, it was, it was really challenging, but my coaches, my, my friends, they're, they're, they've always been there for me. And seeing that they believe in me just as much as I think, like I believe in myself it always means a lot to me and that they didn't feel like I was letting them down if I didn't swim as fast as I wanted to, or if I didn't end up swimming at all. And that ultimately really helped me get through all of that. I'm sure that in a situation like that, where, you know, everything feels down, um, that having, having, like you said, that pressure not to swim, uh, not having exterior pressure and people saying, you know, even if you didn't swim, be okay. Um, I feel like that's, that's a pretty big thing that some might take for granted. Yeah, Coach Nessie and Coach Steve, they've always been big on, they, they see all of us as, as people first and as, as family, not just what, like what time, how many points are you going to score for me at, SEC, at SECs or NCAAs and that, like seeing that out of my coaches and out of our training staff and all of that really meant a lot to me. The, we talked to Nesty, um, a little, a little ways back and, um, you know, his, we found out his wife is a therapist and he had, he had an amazing insight. And what the one thing that I took away from that conversation certainly was that he, you know, d- ha- does a, has a mindful goal of teaching you guys empathy. Um, how do you, you know, coming in your freshman season and, and certainly going through an experience like that, your freshman season, how do you feel like those teachings from, you know, from Nessie, from the coaching staff, from the, your higher ups on the, on the swim team? Um, do, I mean, do you feel like your perspective really shifted through that? Uh, absolutely. I mean, coach Nessie kind of is one of those people that helped me realize that if I'm not doing everything I can for myself mentally, then I'm affecting everyone around me and by him kind of opening up like that and making me realize that like it's okay if I need to talk to someone every other week just to like hash things out like it's that's that's healthy that's accepting that as part of my reality is okay and if it it's gonna help me in the long run then I absolutely need to do it and if I'm not doing it then I'm doing myself and my team a disservice and having him be supportive of all of that with all of us is really important. That's one of those things I just love about coach Nesty. That's, that's a really cool thing. And again, it's not something you hear every day. You know, I, I, I started seeing a counselor every other week uh, through, through this period because mm-hmm. it's such a radical change and, and it's a, it's a weird thing to admit to yourself that that getting things the putting people around you that will help you is okay and it's not actually it's not a sign of weakness or or a bad thing it's it's actually a very positive thing right 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 yeah um so 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 you go on this 2019 is the is the summer of tapers you have all these different restings um after after that nationals uh, 2019 nationals at Stanford. What, where's your mind at then? My mind, I, it was, again, it was, I was still kind of struggling because I had rationally, I knew that there's, there's explanations for why I did not swim as fast as I wanted to. And I know that, but no matter what I try to tell myself, I was just getting stuck in my head of like, I should have been faster. These guys are going faster. I was faster than these guys in high school or I was like faster than them then. And now they're faster than me. And that just getting constantly caught up. And that was just, it was, it was, I was still struggling and it was 
bothering me a lot, but I knew I could have like some good training in the fall. And I was through that time. I was, I was still really struggling. Like I was like afraid of going to practice. I just, I was worried that like that next kind of that next like hundred, if I don't go fast enough, that's going to be the reason that's going to be the reason why I don't like achieve like this goal or that goal. And for me that I kind of, I got through all that and then I, I got hurt and I was kind of like, or it happened like the same injury happened again. And I was like, maybe this is kind of just the sign I need. Like I, I'm not going to swim for a little while and that's fine. Cause I, what happened was they kind of gave me an option. I could just do the rehab route again, kind of pull, do all that stuff. And it would be like 60, 40 that it would most likely happen again. And then having that thought in the back of my mind, is, is it going to happen again? Is it going to happen again? <laughs> that I, I knew that just was not an option. And I talked to coach Steve, talked to coach Nasty, talked to my family. And I just, I was like, yep. I, I think for me, I just need kind of a break. I need to, have that like peace of mind that everything is okay with my knee and yeah they gave me that opportunity and I got to I basically I took three months off and that's the longest time I've ever taken off since I was like 10 years old so that was a big change for me uh, yeah and so take me through what 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 was the injury and what could you do I mean how was how it inhibiting your swimming? So yeah, like my, what the issue was, I'm trying to figure out how to describe this. Well, my, I had a patellar subluxation, which is what happened in my freshman year. And that's kind of like the kneecap, like rolled over to the side that like dislocated and relocated. And that stretched out this ligament over on the other side. And then like we did that and everything healed. Like it was a little bit like strained, but it was looser now. And, but everything was going to be fine. And then I was swimming at, we were at Minnesota for a dual meet actually. And um, I was kicking underwater and it popped back out again and I got out and it was hurting. Funny thing is that it was off like a dive at the end of warm up. It was the last 25 of warm up, And I, I like, it, I was kicking underwater. So I like, it popped out. So I like stopped and grabbed my knee. I was like, ah, and I like flow up to the surface and <laughs> coach Nessie's like, did you catch a cramp buddy? <laughs> I was like, no, nope. <laughs> got out. And then my parents actually had flown out to come watch that dual meet too. So I felt real bad, but having them there for that too was also pretty nice, but they took a, uh, they took good care of me and we got home. We kind of, I got an MRI and kind of talked about the options and ended up deciding to have the surgery, which was end of October last year. So. Okay. Gotcha. And so, so you, you decided to take a few months out of the water. What where was your mind at, at during that time? Where was your body at? You know, were you, were you doing, were you staying active? Um, I mean, I, I was in a big old leg immobilizer for like six or eight weeks. So I was yeah. not very active, <laughs> <laughs> but I was, I was getting in the weight room with our uh, strength coaches and like doing upper body stuff, but there's only so much you can do it when you're kind of limited like that. And I was doing my PT and rehab, but yeah, I kept eating like a swimmer and I was not a swimmer <laughs> for three months. I, I put on like 30 pounds. I was, I got, I got really out of shape and kind of, that was another frustrating thing was once we started, once I did start to train again in like January or yeah, it was about January. Um, Is that January of 2020? January, 2020. Okay. okay. I was getting back in the water slowly and like just pulling at this point And I'm like slowly starting to kind of like lose the weight. And we get through February, I'm still losing weight. And then March hits, everything shuts down. And that was, I was like, no, like not, not right now. But yeah, I mean, I've, I've lost like 30 pounds since, uh, since I guess January 1st. So, I mean, I, I'm in good shape now, but um, yeah, being able to watch all my teammates right as I was starting to get back into training, watching Bobby and Kieran and, Brennan, Alfonso, all these guys, just all their hard work pay off at SECs. And I know they would have swam really well in CBLAs too, but yeah, seeing all that really motivated me. And I'm, I was getting really excited to get back into training with those guys. Yeah. 
I, yeah, I mean, can you, can you describe in a little more detail what that SEC was like? I mean, because certainly the outside world did not see, you know, 406 and 1412 <laughs> coming. Yeah. I mean, honestly, for me, I, I was like barely on deck, like throughout the year. I wasn't like watching those guys train every single day. Cause I was usually back in the training room doing my own like rehab and stuff during their training time. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I knew they, I know they work hard. So like, I, I know they're going to put up best times, but yeah, when I, w- I was over at my friend's apartment watching Kieran's 500 and I'm like doing like the quick math in my head, he's got like a hundred to go. I'm like, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. I had this up wrong and he touched it four or six and all this, like no one like reacted. We're all just like, what? <laughs> like, what? Yeah. It was just like, one of those moments. And then um, my roommate and I drove up to, uh, Auburn to watch uh pre or yeah finals on whatever it was like Friday and prelims Saturday and finals Saturday okay so yeah it was really fun I was there for Bobby's swim and sitting with the parents it was really fun (laughs) I think that's a perfect reaction like there's some swims are just so fast they don't even make sense yeah you're you're just dumbfounded and that that was one of those swims it was just uh yeah it didn't even make sense like, i had become used to seeing like all like the tweets it's like oh like so-and-so breaks all the records like u.s open american pool conference like all that stuff and i was like yeah. hey, my <laughs> roommate just did that same, like, same thing <laughs> <laughs> that is yeah that's, that's the odd sensation for sure and so so then you know so then you have this this other period of of uncertainty but you know it's not just you it's the entire globe right um pandemic hits you know take take me through how you kept moving through those you know six seven months yeah i actually i kind of made another tough decision that was to not go home i decided to stay here in gainesville and i just just kept doing what i could to stay active i mean i was uh, our volunteer assistant coach, Jack Schranick, he, uh, he wasn't our volunteer coach yet. And uh, he was still in town. He's still training too. So we uh, were doing workouts in my garage every single day. And then I think it was around mother's day. Um, uh, coach Robert from GSC texted me and said that they've got some space down in Ocala. So I started driving that 45 minutes every day just to swim for like an hour. But, but yeah, it was good. It was once we got through kind of May, then getting back into swimming again felt really good. Cause I was actually, it was a little bit easier cause I was in better shape physically. And then I had completely at that point, just forgotten how to swim. And I <laughs> swam for like six weeks. I had not swam for three months, swam for six weeks, then not swam for two more months. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I had no idea how to swim anymore. And it was kind of nice because I got to just kind of rebuild my stroke and like feel things I hadn't really felt before just because I just, I just hadn't. And I kind of feel like I'm in a, my strokes are in a better place than they were before and taking a lot of positives out of it. Yeah. And I mean, again, sometimes that's, that's much needed, especially for, especially for someone who's been in the sport, as long as you have, you know, you've been at a, at a top, at a high level for a long time um, earlier you mentioned, you know, wanting to be with Kieran, wanting to, you, you beat Bobby, um, at, at the, uh, the, the Auburn invite. And I'm, I was, I'm a little taken aback by that, you know, cause it's like those guys didn't, didn't have that extended break that you did. Um, how long do you feel like it really took you to get back to a place where you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm rocking and rolling. Um, I would probably say, I mean, once we got through, probably September I was starting to feel pretty good and then we had our first inner squad meet and I like I went faster than I ever have like in a brief and it just it felt really good and just especially I was so like I've never been so nervous for a race in my entire life and I was swimming <laughs> in front of coach Nesty coach Steve and like 12 of my teammates <laughs> there's like it was just it was just weird and I don't know it was just it was refreshing and I, I'm just having a lot more fun with it than I used to I was like, I was saying, I was like afraid of going to practice for just cause I was just worried. Like I was like, what if I just don't do good enough? And now it's, I've kind of made that I've kind of accepted and like working with my counselor. And so this kind of stuff we talk about is like, 
I, in 30 years, I'd much rather look back on my swimming career and be like, and like gone just a little bit slower than I like wish I could, but have had fun, had all positive experiences and just enjoyed every moment of it than be the fastest ever and have just been miserable the whole time. And that's, that's, a, that's just a trade-off that I'm willing to make because if, if I'm miserable doing it, there's, there's no point. Like the whole reason we got into the sport, the whole reason we do any sort of sport, like everyone's like, it's just a game. Like it's just for fun. And that's like, yeah, like being competitive. I, I still have my goals. I still want to achieve my goals. That's not to say that that's not important. I don't care if I become like one of the best swimmers, but if I'm happy and like my mental health is much better and I don't swim as fast, I, that's, that's perfectly fine with me. And yeah. I mean, I'm just, I'm having more fun at practice. I'm having more fun just racing. Like I got the Auburn invite. I'm like getting on the blocks. I'm smiling. I'm like looking over at my friends and I'm like, yeah, like we're going to have fun. Like, it's just, <laughs> this. it's been a completely different experience. This from this fall on for me, since we restarted, I've just been a lot happier, a lot healthier. I'm swimming better too. So I think there's something to be said for that. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, has, has there been a practice, a workout that has been especially fun for you that, that stands out? Um, you know, especially being back with your teammates now. Um, oh, there's, there's a couple of good ones. I mean, we've been doing, uh, like our, I don't think it's any one particular practice. Cause we have a lot of like our freestyle, like, especially like our threshold freestyle group is just ridiculous like i could have one of the best practices of my life and be the fifth fastest guy in the pool because we've got i mean we've got kieran we've got bobby both american records and mid-distance distance freestyle we've got mitch dorigo training with us national teamer for the foreign free italian olympian we've got brennan open water national team alfonso he's looking to make the venezuelan olympic team we've got kevin vargas we've got advate page he's looking to make the indian olympic team like we've got a stacked freestyle group and i like i can honestly like have a really really good practice and be like wow i just got my butt kicked and it's just <laughs> i mean it's one of those things like i just sit there and like at the end of practice i just laugh about it because i'm just I'm, I'm thankful to have those guys around me and it's been a ton of fun to get to work with them especially since i've been back fully healthy and stuff absolutely and so so looking forward in these next couple months um, you know, what's, what are you looking forward to? Do you have any short-term goals? Um, I, you know, obviously trials are on the horizon, but you know, maybe just January, February, even March, what are you, what are you looking forward to? Um, for, I guess, SECs, NCAAs, I'm looking to contribute as much as I can to the team with points and just being on deck, being a leader for them and being as supportive as I can for them. And, I mean, if the times come, which I'm sure they will, that's great too. But I mean, I'd, I'd love to go some best times. It's been a while. I, I mean, I like to, I feel like that Auburn invite, those times were roughly about what I was um, at the end of my high school career. So, I mean, I, I feel like I'm in a good spot. I'm set up well to kind of hopefully break through that barrier a little bit. And if it happens, it happens and I'll take it. But if it doesn't, it's just a game. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcasts on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.